Welcome everybody to Tuesday Night Raw Q&A with um, me, Dr. Andy. Hi, how is everyone? Let me, I think I need a little more light. What do you think? Ah, oh, there I am. Awesome. Okay. And can everybody hear me? Do we have sound and do we have video? Two very important questions. Let me... Hello, Emma's Education. Um, there we go. Okay. Yes, the sound of video. Awesome. Awesome. I hope everyone is having a wonderful, fabulous Tuesday and has brought all of their questions, concerns, wins, triumphs in the world of feeding our animals a raw species appropriate diet. That's what we talk about here. Um, and I am Dr. Andy Harper. I am a doctor of chiropractic. I'm a certified animal chiropractor. I have been in clinical practice for over 20 years. I can say that now. Blows my mind, but I can say that now. Uh, and everything I've learned, I've learned from my own animals, from my clients, um, from living life. Um, I'm not a veterinarian. Can't give you veterinary advice. This is just information that you can then springboard off of and continue your education into the world of feeding raw, feeding species appropriate diet, getting your animals off of carbohydrates that are not nutritionally required, getting them off of processed food that is making them sick, inflamed, and overweight. So anybody got any questions? Pop them into the chat. We'll get them in a little bit. Sometimes I have something prepared. Sometimes I don't. Um, I do like to do my pack updates. I would love to hear your pack updates if you have anything, um, if you've been joining us regularly. And we've missed you, Kyle. <laughs> Welcome back. Hi, Miss Akisha Clark, my right-hand gal. Um, all things tech, email, and social. Um, I still do the adjusting. Yep. Haven't been able to pass. I haven't figured out how to pass that one on yet. Uh, so pack update. Um, if you're on my email list, you got the email about Torchy's ears. He's my 16 month old mini wired hair dachshund who is delightful by the way, but you know, we all say that about our own animals. Um, he has been struggling. I have been struggling with a stinky goopy ear most of his time with me. So he came to live with me at three months. He was 12, 13 weeks old and his ear was fine. And about, I don't know, two weeks later, it was goopy. And I'm like, what? What? Uh, he was a raw fed puppy, came to my house, raw fed. You know, can't be the food. I'm doing everything right. Blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, okay, we'll get this cleared up. No big deal. And I tried everything non-conventional. I refused <laughs> to use the Zymox with any kind of steroids in it. I refused to use any kind of antibiotics to disrupt the microbiome in the ears. Um, I did a product by Amber Naturals, which is called Ear Health. Um, that did not work. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't work. Um, it just did not work for Torch. Um, it's a great product. I think it has garlic in it and some other oils. Um, he actually really liked that. It, I think it felt really good. Um, uh, we did just witch hazel. We did uh, just wiping it out. We did essential oils. We did, I, yeah, I, I left it alone. I don't even, and then I did find a Zymox that did not have any steroids in it. There is one out there. It's in a green box. You can actually find it on Amazon. Um, that didn't work. I think I talked about this on the podcast. I called, well, I texted Neely. We don't, who, who calls anybody anymore, but I texted Neely. I'm like, all right, Give me something because I'm going to go get some antibiotics because the, the, the poor thing, I mean, it, you could squeeze it and it was all goopy and leaky and it never bothered him. He never cared that I was looking at it. He, he didn't mess with it. He, nothing. And so the theory was that the body was still trying to get something out. I, I you know, theory. 
And I'm like, all right. And so Neely, we did a little mini consult and she gave me some homeopathics and we did that. <sighs> that didn't work. I was like, okay, I've heard of this rumor of a blue powder for dog's ears. So I go looking for the blue powder. Hi, Jessica. Turns out it wasn't powder. It was power. <laughs> it's blue power ear wash. And I found it on a lot of Basset Hound sites and a lot of Doodle sites. Long floppy ears, right? And I ordered everything off of Amazon. It all showed up in a couple days. I mixed it all up. And as much as I, I personally cannot wrap around my head why we would squirt things down, water into the ears. That's what this called for. And I'm at my wit's end. So I squirted in his ears twice a day for a week or so. I don't know. I lose track of the days. I mark it down, but I lose track. And lo and behold, like by day three, it was 80, 85% better. It was amazing. And now, like any good pet parent, right? I feel bad that I didn't like do this so much sooner. Right? We always have to beat ourselves up. I mean, because we're really good at it. So we have to beat ourselves up about it. Although he didn't care. He was not sitting around talking to his dog friends um, about his his ear and his incompetent mother, right? Um, but the whole recipe is um, in my email. You can get on that email list at animalmagiccare.com. I try to send out interesting stuff every week, um, interesting information uh, interesting products that clients have had, um, success with. Um, and now we're down to, I was doing it once a day. He truly hates it. Like for the first time in 16 months, when I pick up that bottle of all the things I put in his ears, he runs from me. So I also feel bad about that. Right. Um, but we do it anyway. And you do have to do it outside. You should see my concrete, the, like the right in front of my front door is concrete step. The stoop has blotches of purple because it comes out of his ears. Like it will stain. It will stain. Doesn't stain his ear. Well, not much anyway. <laughs> not by the next day. Um, and so you squirt it in, you let him shake his head, and then I dab out the outside. But it is just about the same color as the, as the other ear. Like in, I don't even know, three weeks flat, if that. Amazing. Um, three ingredients. I did not do the isopropyl alcohol. I did witch hazel, Jensen blue, gentian, gentian blue, and um, boric acid, which is not borax, by the way. I had to Google that, just so you know. Um, all on Amazon. You can find the, the, the recipe online, blue blue power ear wash. It'll come right up. Um, or check out check it out in the email but super thrilled. And it, I read up on this gens gentian blue. I'm like, oh God, what, what is this toxic thing, right? Um, what is it? And it's been, it has been banned in Canada and it's on the FDA's watch list for whatever, whatever. But, you know, it turns out if you put it in the mouths of infants, it irritates them. Yes, infant babies and why they were doing that, I have no idea. Because I, well, I do have an idea. It's really good for fung fungus. And so I think they were trying to treat thrush with it, which is a fungal infection in the mouth. It didn't work out so well. So now, you know, the whole thing is awful. But, you know, you, you can go and get all of those pharmaceuticals all day long that wreak havoc left and right, you know, and have them, you know, those are just fine. So... <laughs> Hashtag face palm. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure I could have dug a lot deeper on it. Um, is it toxic? Is it not? It worked. It doesn't burn. It doesn't smell. It, it's been amazing. Um, just mix it with witch hazel. I wouldn't do the isopropyl alcohol. You run the risk of if there is any kind of sore or any kind of anything in that ear, it'll burn like a. That's just, that's just mean, mean. Um, so that's what's going on with Torch. 
Um, super stoked about that. His eyes are looking good. Oh, yeah. And he's off of all of his probiotics, all off of his digestive enzymes. Um, he's, he's kind of rocking it. He's actually, I pick him up. I'm like, wow, he's got, he's got some girth to him. Um, and so no vomiting, um, doing really good. So how's it getting better than that? Yay. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to talk about my OMAD. Um, any newbies, let me know where you're from. I'm so happy you're here. We love new raw feeder questions because I keep saying this. I'm kind of like on a little bit of a soapbox and a little bit of rant about it. Um, we forget a long-term raw feeder is 10 years. You know, um, when I talk with Dee, Dee Mercer Moffat, CEO of Raw Dog Food Company, I think she's got 20 years under her belt. And so we're so cavalier and so nonchalant about the whole thing that I know this is very overwhelming um, for the new raw feeders and newbies out there. So we love newbie questions. Love them. We don't know what you don't, you don't know what you don't know. And we don't know what you don't know. So we would love to fill in the gaps for you, hold your hand, and really um, get this going for your animals. Um, Kyle says this week's episode on the Raw Dog Food Truth podcast, which I do with Dee Dee Mercer Moffat um, every Monday, um, and talking about prednisone, is there a natural solution for it? Something that would work just as good for inflammation. Not that I am aware of. I have been asking that question for 20 years. Um, and I think, honestly, the pharmaceutical companies have been asking that for 20 years. And they've come up with other drugs, but nothing works like a steroid. Like prednisone or dexamethasone or prednisolone. They're all very, very, very simple. simple. It just depends on the um, practitioner's choice. Um, I don't think they've come up with anything in 20 years that matches what they do in the body. That And that's just from peripheral, peripheral, right? Like I don't do drugs. I'm a chiropractor. Don't know anything about pharmaceuticals. Can't prescribe them. Not in that world at all. But just from clients coming in with issues and what they're being prescribed and the veterinary side of stuff and, and even a little bit of some of the people stuff, they don't seem to have anything that works like steroids do in the body. Um, raw feeders are always going to be ahead of the game. Their animals are going to be less inflamed. You are going to have a, a higher saturated fat content in the meat that you're feeding that is going to help the body to um, work with the um, exogenous steroids and um, and then the endogenous, like inside steroids, right? Um, and it, it, you're ahead of the game if your animal um, requires any steroids, if you are already raw feeding. You can always switch and transition, but it's always a bad time when you are under stress to have to get something done, right? So hard, so hard. Okay, let's see, let's see. Um, Lisa from last week got her first order of raw. Woohoo! Now, hopefully, it's not just sitting in her freezer. <laughs> I know so many people get their order and they put it in the freezer and they look at it. You actually got to feed it. I'm saying. Um, she said her pup Lila was super sniffy and excited the moment she brought the box in the house. Yeah. I actually, um, in my garage right now, I have two boxes of um, kibble. It's it's being picked up by somebody else. And my dogs were like, oh, okay. And they haven't bothered it since. They're like, eh, we don't eat that stuff. Um What about omegas instead of the steroids or as a preventative? Absolutely. Omegas are going to re reduce inflammation in the body on a regular basis. Um, when you have something like a disc herniation and you have massive amounts of inflammation that is part of the healing process, 
the omegas are going to contribute, but they're not going to, they're not going to touch it, unfortunately. Uh, and I, as a raw feeder, the omegas are much, much better in the meats, right? Instead of the kibbles, the processed foods. Uh, but I still struggle on sources of omegas. Uh, mine won't eat sardines, the poop heads they are. Mine will not do it. And um, I have cut them up and they've spit out each piece. Okay, I shouldn't say that. Gizmo thinks that's a wonderful day because he goes around and cleans up everybody's fish that's been thrown out of their bowl. Um, but besides that, my bigs won't eat it. Molly Brown, Molly Brown's like put up a middle paw to any kind of fish. Just being a pain in my rumpus on that. Torch will eat anything. They will eat the canned sardines, which, okay, but they're in a can, right? Uh, and then I won't buy fish oil. They will not get just fish oil. Most of the fish oil that you get off the shelf, even if you spent a lot of money and you got a really good brand and, and you know where it was sourced from, generally shows up rancid in that bottle. The bonds in fish oil are just too fragile. They break and it goes rancid. Um, so I will not do fish oil. Um, all the seed oils that I was doing in the past, I won't do anymore. Um, so I've been struggling. I really have been... Even the sea potent from Adored Beast sits in sunflower seed oil. So it gives me pause. That's all I'm saying on that one. Uh, I've pretty much gotten rid of all the vegetable oils, the seed oils in the house for me and my husband. So that leaves a phytoplankton. We want to go to the source of what the fish are eating. So we go to the phytoplankton. So Adored Beast has a great product. Um, I believe you can get other ones out there in the world. I have not looked. Um, but yes, you can always, and you most likely want to do more, more omegas when your animal's inflamed and having a crisis because it's very stressful. And the steroids, the extra steroids add stress to the body too. Um, what was the math I did to determine the amount of raw to feed. Well, there's a calculator. So much nicer. There is an actual calculator at rawdogfoodandco.com. So you can plug in the weight of your animal. And you want to determine anywhere between 2 to 3% of their body weight per meal. Um, and so that was my math. But it doesn't look right when you look at the calculator. So you need, I'm being blonde at the moment. So let's say you have a 50, 50 pound dog and they are 12 years old and they're not very active. All right. So you want to multiply that by, let's just go with 2%. If you have a 50 pound three year old border collie, that when you hike two miles, they hike 10 because they're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They're going to be 3%, maybe more, to give you an idea. Um, and then that 2% may be um, even less the more senior they get. It, it just kind of, these are guidelines. They're always guidelines. Um, and so times 2% two gives you one. So it's, a, it's, a, it's like actually 10. So it's 10 ounces is what that is. Use the calculator because I'm not very good at explaining this. Um, I just know what I'm looking at. Like I know it's not one ounce. Um, so I know I wish I could like screen share like on Zoom and we would go through the calculator on the Raw Dog Food and Company because that would be fantastic. So let's see. My Doberman's at 80 pounds. Um, he's not very active. So I, I actually keep him at 2% and um, times 10. So he's at 16 ounces per meal. So 32 ounces a day, two pounds a day. So two pounds a day for 80 pounds of dog. Um, let's say it's $5 a pound. So $10 a day, you're looking at $300 a month, roughly. 
for an 80, 80 pounds of dog. Now that could be two 40 pounders. That could be four 20 pounders, right? Like you give or take. Now he actually only eats 11 ounces per meal because that's what he do, does really well at. He does really well at that. I go any lower than that. Mm. Um, he has treats. He has chews. You know, and so, sometimes he gets like the duck heads on top of that. Sometimes that's included in his 11 ounces, but he does really good at that. He's not skinny. And so it's the guidelines. It's a guidelines. So you can always just start with 2.5%. So let's do that. Let's see if he was 80 pounds times 2.5% times 10 equals 20 ounces per meal. So you start there. You start there. And then you go up or down based on your animal and how they're acting and how they're looking. They leave any food in that bowl, you're overfeeding. End of discussion. You are overfeeding until proven otherwise. Now, I can't say that about my poodle. That's a whole different story. But I know that dog. I have seven years of history feeding him raw. When you start out, if there's food left in that bowl, you are overfeeding until proven otherwise. And go buy a scale. Have Amazon drop you, buy a scale from Amazon, have them drop it on your door. <laughs> Step. Get a scale. I will argue with Neely to the day I die on this. She eyeballs it. She tells everybody, ah, no big deal. Just blah, blah, blah. Get a scale. And if you really want to be a neurotic mess like I can be, whatever's left in that bowl, go reweigh it. See what's in there. Is there two ounces in there? Be two ounces less the next meal. And you, you'll, you'll figure it out. You will figure it out. You and your animal will, will get in tune and you will figure it out. Um... I think I covered the supplements. The sardines will cover your omegas. Um, and complete food is always my go-to. Whatever you can fix and do with food, you do it first. We, we run off for these damn pills. And by damn pills, I'm not just referring to pharmaceuticals. I'm referring to our supplements. We are so entrained to go grab a pill or a powder or a this or a that instead of what can we do with food first? What can we do with food first? And sardines is a whole food. It has everything. It's got all the proteins. It's got all the fat. It's got all the nutrients, macro, micro, and the body knows what to do with a whole food. Okay. Our supplements, as good as we can get them, is, are generally still just components of a food. That's where the phytoplankton is a pretty much a whole food, right? Um, okay. I hope I helped with the math. Go use the calculator. I'm sure Google even says raw dog food calculator and it'll come up with some other ones. But, you know, we, we love Didi, so we try to use our website. It's good for the algorithms and everything. All right, our boy Jax is on five milligrams of Pred once a day, and we're weaning him off of it slowly. Don't want to keep having to put him on it because of his sterile meningitis. Yep. Um, so my five milligrams of Pred is not much. He's a he's a beagle, so he's not very big, but that's not much. And yeah, you 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 want to get him off, and we want to stay off, right? Um. Uh, so what do we want to do, right? We're already raw feeding. We're most likely not vaccinating, um, minimally work doing stuff for bugs. Um, it might be time for some voodoo. The voodoo works. Um, I don't know if you guys have looked, but is there a BICOM practitioner in your area? Let's go to the energetics. Let's clear out some of the emotions. Let's get all of that, all of the energetic 
part of this working for him. Um, and that may really um, help. Um, yeah, I, I, I say minimal because you live in New Jersey. So I'm just amazed that you do no flea and tick. So hats off and congratulations. Like that is, that is no easy feat living in New Jersey. I've said this and I'll say it again. It's so much easier here in Colorado. Um, but I would Google Vicom, B-I-C-O-M practitioners and see who comes up and go for the energy work now now before there's another flare up. Yeah, Chinese herbs. Hmm. I, I I know they're popular. I know they're all the rage. Um I anecdotal, I don't work with them. I don't speak the language. I don't know know much about them. Um, just anecdotally, the, the, most people are like, um, do we have to keep doing this? Because they, they don't seem that helpful. And what is the sourcing? Where are they coming from? Are they packaged before they're moldy? Are they coming from China? What pesticides are on them? What else is in these Chinese herbs across the board? It's very concerning. Um, that's my two cents. And I don't have any um, proof of anything on the Chinese herbs. But because they're in a foreign language, because they're coming from another country, it's concerning. Not all of them are coming from another country. but um, So Google, go to Google, Jessica. And punch in BICOM practitioners, B-I-C-O-M. You want that machine in particular. Um, and that machine, it's been, it's, the machine's been around for 50 some odd years. It comes out of Germany. Um, the practitioners have extensive training. Most of them work with people, but some will see your animals. Um, it's what probably has really contributed to torch finally i mean the, the blue ear stuff was amazing it the bicom didn't touch his ears but um we're now off of all this stuff for his stomach and he had been doing that periodically through his whole journey here for the last six eight months um and yes and there's reiki and there's acupuncture and and that's fine um and Okay. I only that was okay. Yeah, seed oils are only good for industrial lubricants. Yeah. Yeah, they stay in the system two to five years. I think is their half life or something. Like, remember that campaign sitting was the new smoking? Well, now seed oils are like the new smoking. <laughs> like, they are horrific on the body and they're even worse when they're heated up and they're in everything like not I shouldn't say everything all your chips all your crackers and everything you eat out I want to know a restaurant that actually gives you real butter because I guarantee you all the butter is mixed with margarine right everything is fried in the healthy not healthy vegetable oil. Um, we have been snookered and snowed and um, lied to simply. Um, <laughs> go to holistic vet. Hot. Okay. Got that. Oh, G2 just had his first zoomies. That, yeah. Kyle's like, they're in everything. The seed oils are in everything. I mean, um, my husband made some chicken wings and I bought Frank's Red Hot and I looked at the ingredients. I'm like, okay, like vinegar and cayenne. Got this. I come home and I didn't see the open bottle of wing sauce, which was also Frank's. And he made the wings out of that. And I turn it over, canola oil. 
He's like, you're not eating these? I'm not, I'm not eating those. <laughs> and so he had all the wings and I had to find something else. But, right, I went to go put seasoning on the prime rib I was making. And the blend had um, sunflower oil in it. Mm. Made my own blend after that. <laughs> Just mixed up my own herbs. Um, so I, I am that person that I am reading all of the ingredients, all of them, all of them, all of them in everything. I drive my husband nuts. Um, we, I've been on a clean out the pantry kick too. Um, like we have so many bottles of pickles is ridiculous, but anyway, I digress. Everything. Okay. I think I got everybody. Keep them coming. Yeah. Sneak the hot. Yeah. I, I can actually get phytoplankton into mo Molly will eat the phytoplankton. And so will the bigs. <laughs> um, I've been like just ordering online. So I can read all the ingredients and then I'll just order and then just shows up at my house and I don't even have to go to the grocery store because <laughs> it does. It takes me so long. And then you're at the grocery store and I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, anywho. OK, that's why I absolutely love that. I don't even have to, I don't. Gosh, the last time I was in a store for my animals food, I don't even have to do that. I and meet usually it's. I actually had Dee Dee actually personally delivered my food the other day. I'm so blessed. Um, otherwise, we go to meet him at the truck or I just have it delivered. And it shows up in my front step. I mean, this delivery thing is is amazing. There are some really, I mean, we were doing it before COVID, but oh my gosh, since then, it's been amazing. Um, I have like poppy seeds and lemon extract in my cart on Amazon. It'll be here in a day or whatever. So amazing. Um, I've been digging into humic and fulvic acid. Um, recently incorporated into their diet and it seems to have helped a longstanding undiagnosed infection. That is awesome. Be aware that humic and fulvic acid are generally full of heavy, heavy metals. I'm sorry. I've done them. I've gotten different kinds. And I can't say that um, I've been like, woohoo, um, I feel better or the animals feel better. But um, I was in class not too long ago and they were talking about the heavy metal content, content of humic and fulvic acids. So be very careful with that. And we already get a lot of heavy metals. You also get a lot of heavy metals if you're doing any kind of zeolite. And possibly, I need to look this up. I'm wondering if DE, diatomaceous earth, might be heavy metal. Because I believe that's a form of zeolite. Don't, don't quote me on it. Um, so if it's working for you and your, and your kiddos, that's awesome. Just be aware of that. Um, yeah, so maybe, maybe call them up and have a conversation. Um, and maybe if they have their testing, that would be great. They, they should have it tested and then you'll have an idea. Um, is, I, hey, Kyle, is that black drops, BLK drops? I don't know what that is. Um, what other things have people been trying? Who, who absolutely loves their Chinese herbs and wouldn't live without them? I mean, I'm not saying throw them out. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater by any means. Um, I would love, I, I do have this chocolate lab that that's what she does for her joints. And she loves this one brand and, and she does great. Um, and you just, it's, it, I know folks, I know, oh, I've got to try something else. 
right? We got to try it. Nobody has the answer. You got to try it. Like all the things I did to poor Torch's ears, right? Is one ear anyway. Um, Kika, yes, yes, yes. Kika does love um, BLK. Oh, is the name. Okay, cool. There you go. BLK. Check out some fulvic mineral concentrate. Oh, I, I got some. There's a random squirrel. Um, there's a coffee out there that has um, fulvic and humic acids in it, and I ordered that. Um, it's actually the man that started Bulletproof Coffee, and I can ask Asbury, David Asbury. Um, he sold Bulletproof, and he started this other coffee company. That did not agree with me. See, tried it. I did not like it. I, I, the coffee did not make me feel good at all. So, you know, sources. I didn't ask for his testing. Um, yeah, Dave Asprey. Okay, close. Thank you. Um, where was I? Yes, Kika. Kika. So, um, she is a delightful handful of a giant schnauzer. So everybody's familiar with schnauzers, right? Yes, danger coffee, yes. Everyone's familiar with giant schnauzers, or schnauzers, like small ones, right? The little, usually silvery, gray, salt and pepper, um, barky little bearded things, right? Okay. Now, turn that into 80 pounds. Yeah. And she's European bred. She's got a tail. She's got ears. And she's not salt and pepper. She's pepper and salt. That's what the actual color is, which is just crazy to me. It's awesome. And she freaks out over cats and she freaks out over leaves blowing across the driveway. And she freaks out over like light that glim glimmers through the window. Sometimes I have to put the shades down. I actually have to ask my husband to leave the house and or go down in the basement and be quiet. Because, and she's gotten used to Ashley here on Saturdays, but Ashley was a big no-no for a, a few visits there too. She has always loved me. She has always loved chiropractic. She will get on my table. I can do whatever, but she is a wing -a -ding. And mom has gone the very traditional route for many years with the veterinary behaviorist and tried all the um, brain drugs. All the SSRIs, your Prozac, your Zoloft, your this, your that. I can't even keep up with all of them. And none of them really were working. And she was on like the eighth one or whatever. I don't know. And she found that this acupuncturist is holistic vet. And she did. She was put on some Chinese herbs that have made a bigger difference than any of the pharmaceuticals. That thank you, Ashley. That that is a great example because it has worked marvelously for her. Um, so there you go. Um, and it's 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 actually quite remarkable in her case. It really is. Um, and Ashley shared. Um, we share our Chinese herbs, right? Uh, shared some Chinese herbs with me that worked great for Molly Brown's itching but it wasn't like a big thing for her little dog's itching. So it's really trial and error with them. For Sigmatic Coffee, I I, I, I laugh. Because I, and actually, Keisha and I were talking about that coffee the other day, because I call it Stigmata, and that is not, not what it is at all. It's just every time I see that name, that's what goes through my head. And it's a really bad movie and it's got religious connotation and it's just ridiculous. And I apologize. I've had a couple of their samples. Um, I currently have one called Organo Gold in my, and it has, the black one has Rishi in it. And then the Premier has Rishi, Lion's Mane, and Cordyceps. And I like their coffee a lot. They come in instant little packets too. And that's Organo Coffee, Organo Gold Coffee. I'm not sure which one. Um, I had had them years and years ago and I just came across them again and they're still really good. So I do have that too. And then I, 
I guess we're talking about coffee, although it has nothing to do with dogs because do not give dogs coffee. Um, I have Life Boost at the moment. They're dark roast, and that is fabulous. And that's supposed to be super, super clean. Mycotoxins, mold. Coffee is actually... Okay, I, I'm going to give you updates as I go along, but I really, really need to quit the coffee. Um, coffee is really not good for complete healing. It's not really good for the gut. It's, it, and then there's all the studies that it's actually really good for you. But coffee can have a lot of mold, a lot of mycotoxins in it, and it can be pretty toxic. And so when we talk about danger coffee, bulletproof coffee, these are some that are supposedly grown and dried with less chemicals and less molds and less mycotoxins on them, if you cared. Um, and I love my coffee so much, but I need we, we need to get off the caffeine. I really do. Um, yeah, I didn't like the danger coffee at all. It was super expensive too. Emma's, Emma's education, Ashley's like, it's good for the soul. Oh my God, it makes me so happy in the morning. It really does. And I... Mm, it's like my one last vice, like really my one last vice, you know, there's no more drinking. There's no more sugar. There's no, you know, like, it's like my one last, I mean, besides the rawness, I pretty much eat like my dogs. It's ridiculous around here. Um, I love it. <laughs> Ashley helps me out in the office on Saturdays and she does, she gets, um, under, uh, she, she gets, she, okay. She calls Tuesday Andy and then there's Saturday Andy. Tuesday Andy, which you see here is all full of piss and vinegar and ready for the week. Well, by Saturday Andy, she's not so happy with the week. And so Ashley's a very good sport and she puts up with me on Saturday. Under 20 ounces a day is good. Okay. That's what they say, but... I should, oh, I wish I had my notes from class because they actually talk about, about a specific um, chemical in coffee. And I do under 20 ounces. I can't do any more. That's a lot of coffee. I don't do that much. So now now Keisha Clark can um, talk about Tuesday Andy and Saturday Andy. <laughs> Anything? Back to, oh, OMAD. Yes, I am. Well, I'm kind of still doing my OMAD, my OMAD um, journey with my own dogs. One meal a day. Torch is rocking one meal a day. Rigs, not a problem. The Doberman. Molly Brown's good. She actually looks heavier. How is that possible, right? Um, Gizmo's just mad. <laughs> He's like, but he's at that super senior age where, you know, it's all about food and it's all about sleeping. Like that is their true loves in life when they get super senior. And then there's Crosby. We call him a pita poodle. Pain in the ass poodle. My last poodle was a pain in the ass too when it came to eating. Um, poodles do have this reputation. And he is not ready to eat in the morning. We've been eating around 7 a.m. Everybody else eats. He picks at his food. So I pick it up, put it back, and he gets the rest of it in the evening. So I'm still only making one bowl. But he, and then he, everyone gets all riled up because they all think they're getting food, right? They settle down pretty quick. They're pretty smart about it. But... So most of my dogs are OMAD. The cats are not. They went back to two meals a day. I really didn't expect them to go OMAD. Although I did re read a study that they did in Canada that cats did just fine one meal a day. But And they, mine are actually very good about it, and they don't give me a hard time. But it just seemed easier, and their food wasn't sitting out as long. So because they didn't eat all the food. They ate part of it and left it the raw meat sitting out all day. So I'm like, oh, that's probably not the best idea. So OMAD is going pretty good. It has cleared up a lot of time on my schedule. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying that. Um, <laughs> yes. 
So that's my OMAD adventures. Um, anyone else been brave enough to go OMAD with their with their kiddos? Um, I don't know. We'd love to hear. So one meal a day. Yes, you could feed your animals one meal a day. But I got to say, you need to give supplements twice a day. It's kind of a pain. Um, Because then you got to like pull out the cream cheese or liver sausage or, or rung schwager or whatever you, rung schwager, whatever you call it. We called it liverwurst outside of when I grew up in Chicago. Now it's got a big fancy name here in Colorado. Same stuff. Um, and then you had to put the supplements in there and you got to remember to do that. So, you know, uh, kind of torn on that. Although I do like that most of the adored beast supplements are one time a day supplements. Um, yeah, well, Keisha, you have cats too. I'm like, I don't, kitties are hard, right? Like my kids, my cats are very, very food agreeable. I have heard of some just horror stories at cats and their food. Um, I had one client in, they have a food timer, right? I think, God, I was trying to remember the story, but that the thing has to, I, I, I mean, like the cat got violent, like a violent, if it did not get its food. Now, granted, it was all kibble. And the cat behaviorist encouraged not feeding anything else but the kibble. And that, you know, and, and the more times the kibble was fed, the better or something like that. I'm like, oh, my God, you're just killing this cat. But the cat sounded so horrible that I don't know who else would want to live with this cat. I mean, like, it sounded terrible. So I didn't, we didn't get into that um, much. But I'm like... I, I would love for animal and people, like the behaviorists, to really, really do some research on nutrition. Because what affects the nervous system and the brain the most is the food. And you want to change behaviors, you need a healthy, happy, non-inflamed brain to work with. And that is not what we have in our animals. That is not what we have in our children. It is not what we have in, in adults, in seniors these days, right? Like we have inflamed bodies and we have inflamed brains that are impacting behavior everywhere in all these beings. Um, and that includes our dogs. Um, and it's, it's fascinating to have dog trainers and dog behaviorists in here that you know, I have one gal and she brought in a whole gallon baggie of kibble because she couldn't have my Zewi Peak beef because she can't have beef. Well, she probably can't have beef if it was raw meat and not crappy kibble. But she, gallon bag. The smell of kibble makes me so nauseous these days. It's amazing. Um... Have you not smelled kibble for a while and then got around it? It smells rancid. It smells old and disgusting. Like, and we were, Ashley and I, because it was a Saturday, and we we're filling up the snuffle mat with the kibble, and we're both like, oh, God. And then she left, and I had to shake out the snuffle mat because she wasn't a very good snuffler. And I had to pick up all the kibble, and I threw it in the trash. I'm like, No. No. Um, so what was my point? Oh, yes. Inflamed brains and behavior. Um, and if you are having behavior issues with your animals, change the diet. Change the food. Get them off of kibble. Get them off of the processed food. Check your treats. Get rid of all the junky treats. One single ingredient meat treats. Until proven otherwise. Single ingredient meat treats until you get so good at reading those ingredients, you know what you're eating. And you have super healthy animals and you can handle some more stuff. But there's very few super healthy animals out there. There's very few super healthy people out there. You're having behavior stuff, 
change the diet. Get them off of the processed food. Get them off of all the sugar. When you go to training class and that trainer is handing out um, prescription food as treats or bright red treats or bright green treats, that is going to impact the behavior of your animal in that class and their learning capability. Do it with food first. Get them on a species appropriate, meat-based, meat diet, raw meat diet, bones, organ, meat, muscle meat. That's it. Um, and see what happens with their brain and with their behavior. Um, my little soapbox for today. I don't know where that came from, um, but and it's cream cheese works great for supplements. Love cream cheese. Um, throw out the peanut butter. No more peanut butter. No more peanut butter treats. No more peanut butter. Get rid of it. It's toxic, especially if you're getting Jeff and Skippy and all the cheap regular peanut butters for, the, for your animals. Get rid of it, rid of it, rid of it. And a lot of times, all of your, um, what we talked about, well, how many how many lives ago, we talked about lectins and beans and anti-nutrients and all of that, all of that in the grain-free kibbles um, that are affecting our animals. So we have that. We have mycotoxins and molds and, God, I think there's something else in peanuts. Like peanuts, no peanuts. No. And a lot of nuts period, are inflammatory. Okay. Um, that'd be great. Goat, goat cheese. Goat cheese is, is, oh gosh, I'm going to mix, mix this up. Cow's milk is A1, goat's milk is A2, or cow's is A2 and goat is A1. But either way, goat's milk, goat's milk, goat's cheese, which is pretty much the only cheese I eat these days, if I even have any dairy, is um, full of MCTs, medium chain triglycerides. They are, it is actually less inflammatory um, and better for the liver um, and helps the litter, li litter, liver produce ketones so you can run off of your alternative energy source. So I even saw, I even got goat yogurt. It was super tart. It was wonderful in deviled eggs. Wonderful instead of sour cream. Stupid expensive. Like this one little container is like $6. I'm like, oh my God. But um, goat cheese, feta, actual goat cheese feta. Believe me, I actually like cow's milk feta better, but because goat cheese feta's got some kick. Um, but yeah, yeah, goat cheese is Great, great for us, great for the animals. It was probably even easy, it'd be easier on them too. Goat is A2. Okay. Yeah. But can be A2 depending on the cow, but yeah, you got to figure out the cow. It's just easier to get the goat. And it's shocking how much goat cheese Costco has. I was shocked. And Whole Foods has... Um, a shredded goat cheese that actually is very similar to mozzarella. It, it doesn't taste like mozzarella, but it has the same um, texture. It was pretty awesome. So it's out there. Um, yeah, if, if, if you want to use that, you have that in the house. It's great for you and the animals. There you go. All right. Any last minute questions floating around? Anything you want to throw in there? Um, I will be back next week. We have five lives this month. May is a long month. I plan on being here. Um, I do have another trip to Chicago, but won't affect us. So I will be here. Um, nice. Sliced goat cheese at cheddar. I'll have to check that out. I was trying to find it online and you can only get it at Whole Foods, which I don't like going into Whole Foods, but that's another story. Uh, I'll be back here next week for another Tuesday night raw Q&A with 
like Dr. Andy, uh, where we talk about feeding our animals a raw species appropriate diet and all the health benefits that go along with that and all the health benefits that go along with getting them off of high carbohydrate processed kibble. Um, kind of goes for us to eat more meat, a lot less processed food, you'll do better. Um, my website, if you want to check me out, if you're in the Denver area, I am currently not seeing any new clients in the month of May because May is booked already because mostly because of my trip to Chicago. So June, we'd love to meet you and your animal. If you're in the area, that's Animal Magic Care. You can join the email list there. You can check around about chiropractic. And so you can go and find somebody in your area. Um, my point of view, every animal should be adjusted two to four times a year. Just do it. You'll thank me for it later. Um, this YouTube channel is um, Dr. Andy's World. The website is animalmagiccare.com. The podcast is the Raw Dog Food Truth Podcast with Dee Dee Mercer Moffat, the CEO of Raw Dog Food and Company. Um, we chat every Monday morning. Um, God only knows what will come up. Let me tell you. Um, yeah, I can bring it in my car. That's just lame. I'm going to get out of my car and go shop. <laughs> oh, I'm a dork. Um, big giggly hugs all around. Absolutely. Thank you all for being here. Bring your friends next week or shoot them the link. They can catch the replay. Um, they're all over the place this time. But all for, for all your newbie, newbie feeders out there, we went through some real basic stuff last week. It was such a good show. I was so grateful that Lisa was here asking all of her questions about being a new raw feeder. And we went through some of the nuances and a lot of the stuff I kind of learned over the years. So last week was wonderful. Um, where your pet's health is our business. <laughs> friends, don't let friends feed kibble. Absolutely. I love it, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Chandel, uh, Ashley and Keisha until next week. How much fun can you have with your animals? Bye-bye. <laughs>